Hi, I'm David Shank, and we're here talking with Dr. Rudy Tanzi from Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard, and also chairman of the research consortium at Cure Alzheimer's Fund. And we're going to be asking him uh, questions that you have asked from Facebook and at, uh, symposia that we've done, um, you the public. So we're going to we're going to run through some questions, and uh, and Rudy's going to answer them uh, perfectly and quickly and give you everything you need to know in just a few seconds' time. So let's, <laughs> let's run through some of these questions. So Rudy, uh, is Alzheimer's hereditary? What's the kind of quick answer to that? Yes. Okay, boom. It's, it's, it's uh, basically all cases of Alzheimer's have some genetic component, but the earlier the age of onset, the stronger the role of genetics. The later the age of onset, the more interplay of, of your genes with your environment and how you live your life. If I don't have anyone in my family going back, say, two or three generations of Alzheimer's disease, am I still uh, vulnerable to Alzheimer's? If you live longer than them. Yeah. Mm. Because remember, all of these, your family history is also based on how long people live. Right. And they may be dying of other causes. So. Right. Yeah. So, so for people who know they have the disease in their family, they're at risk. Probably it's, it's at increased risk compared to someone who doesn't have any That's connection. Right. But if you don't know the, of any cases in your family, you shouldn't assume that you're immune to the disease or anything like that. That's correct. Right. Um, so are we at a point where we can, get, we can recommend genetic testing for anyone? We can only recommend genetic testing that's reliable for that maybe 2% of Alzheimer's that strikes under 60 years old that involves these hard-hitting mutations in the first Alzheimer's genes we found in the um, 80s and 90s. So if, if a patient presents with a family history and onsets under 60, the odds are we can figure out, we can do genetic testing. From for 60 and on, which is most of Alzheimer's, it's the interplay of so many genes, and we're still, just, we're still finding those genes, and we're still finding the mutations in those genes that actually matter. So um, although there are there have been direct-to-consumer companies, you know, direct-to-consumer DNA companies, mm -hmm. claiming to do testing for Alzheimer's. It's not at all reliable. We don't mm. have, the information is just still, still coming around. And if it was reliable, what would we do with the information at this point? Is it, is it actually useful information to know that you have or don't have these genes? You know, it's, everybody has their reasons, right? Some people want to know for family planning, financial planning. Um, some people just want to know. Um, uh, but in terms of carrying out a personalized medicine strategy of, you know, uh, find out that you're at high risk and then st start doing interventions therapeutically, we're not there. We can just offer lifestyle recommendations, more exercise, you know, eat, eat a Mediterranean diet, um, stay intellectually stimulated, stay socially engaged, get a lot of sleep. Which you know, everyone like should that. be doing in their lives regardless yeah. of whether they test, you know, positive for, right. for any of the genes right. that we know about. Okay. Um, how accurate is APOE, the APOE score in prediction of Alzheimer's? It's not. So if you carry two copies of APOE4, one from mommy and one from dad, then it's a very high risk, but not guaranteed. Um, although, you know, it could take until you're 90. Um, for one copy of E4, um, which is 20% of the population, that's not sufficient to give you the disease. It, I mean, it increases your risk uh, three to four fold. Mm. Well, what does that mean, three to four fold? It means you have, three to, you have a three to four fold increased risk versus the person who doesn't have APOE4. It doesn't at all mean you're guaranteed to get the disease in your lifetime. Mm. That's why you need the other genes that work with APOE to do a reliable test, and we're still working on that. We have others working on that.